Hey guys, here's another step for the movie poster series. Continuing with our poster series, I'm going to add some elements to our sword. In the last video, I showed you how to do a reflection, but I'm definitely not done with it. When Zero showed me the sword for the first time, he talked about some patching that he wanted to add to certain parts so he could effectively grip it and use it in different ways. Well, since I didn't photograph that part, I have to make it in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you how I do it. Effectively, it's three steps. The lasso tool, the erase tool, and the transform options. So the first thing that you'd want to do is find an image that suits it best. Now I couldn't for the life of me find any cloth tape images that would fit this sword. Um, I tried hockey tape, things like that, didn't really work out. But I did find these. These are tsukas, basically samurai sword handles. And I'm going to incorporate these into his sword, and I'm going to show you how. So the first thing you want to do is grab the magnetic lasso tool. Since these pictures are so perfectly isolated from their background, the lasso tool is the best because it's going to fit in these little um, details. So, the whole thing. Bear with me while I get this done. There we go, we've got a almost perfectly isolated image using the magnetic lasso. That's the beauty of that tool is that if you have an image like this, then the magnetic lasso becomes very useful. So right click, layer via copy. We get a new layer that is entirely independent. As you can see, I already created one. But I'll just do it again to show you. Grab the move tool, and we're going to move it into zero vector one, which is our smart object. You can see that it's huge. So, we want to transform it. Command T. First rotate it so it's vertical because it's easy to work with when it's vertical. Press Enter. Control T again. Oops. Con Command or Control T again. Press and hold Shift when you move it down so it stays even when you transform it. And bring it down to the relative size that we're going to use it. Zoom in. Oh, and by the way, the way that I'm zooming in without changing tools is holding down the Alt or Option key and moving up or down on my scroll bar. Very, very useful and quick technique for fast professional editing. Transform a little bit more. That's pretty good. But you notice that the angle of the suka is different from this, so I'm going to flip it horizontally. Edit, transform, flip horizontal, and when we move it into the sword, it's going to be much more useful. So the next thing I want to do is erase parts of this image. Now the top part obviously makes it look like it is part of its own object and we want to integrate it properly into the sword itself. So I'm going to erase the top metal or top wood parts, top and bottom wood parts of this as well as the inner parts that looks like stones or grain. But don't get rid of the monkey because that's that adds a little personality. So you simply take your eraser tool, make sure that that layer is selected, and start erasing. Do this carefully and do it with some thought in mind so you don't make any um, improper erasing mistakes. Bear with me while I get this done. Okay, now that I've effectively erased everything and done it in the best way possible, we want to transform this object to conform to this part of his sword. So, Commander Control T, and first thing we're going to do is rotate it. We're going to move it over to the part of the sword that we want it. Way too big, of course. Hold down Shift, move it down, move it down, move it down, move it down, until generally so generally it is where it needs to be. And we've kind of got it where we want it. So ro rotate it a little bit. And it's getting close, but we do need to make a couple of changes. So we're going to right click and press distort. This gives us much, much more control over the object itself. So 
So that's pretty good. We're going to press enter and the transformation will take place. But obviously it doesn't fit in at all because it's going over his arm. So we want to get it under his arm. And that's a pretty simple masking method that I showed in the previous video. Just grab your sword mask, command or control click on the mask itself so the mask is selected, click on the layer and click add layer mask. There you go. Now we're not done yet. We want to add a couple of effects to make it pop and fill in more. So go to effects, drop shadow, set the opacity to 100%, set the distance at one, maybe two pixels, try two. And set the angle so it looks as real as possible. Experiment with this to try and figure out exactly what will work for you. And set the size. Play around with the size. Make You want to make this really, really subtle. And press OK. And it's definitely getting there, but there's a couple of extra things I'd like to do. First, fix these erasing, fix these little issues that I didn't erase. Secondly, because this is a pixel mask, um, there's definitely a few things that kind of disappeared and I want to bring them back and it's pretty easy so since it is a mask make sure that your foreground color is set to white select the brush tool make sure that the mask you created is selected and just start filling it in and when you do this it adds a bit more depth to it that you didn't get before basically it fills back in the stuff that you had that went missing So that's pretty good. Commander control save, check out the poster, and it looks pretty good. In retrospect, I'm probably going to be adding a few things to it, like changing the color, uh, adding some dirt and smudge to it to help it blend even better so it's almost unnoticeable. But you get the general idea and it looks pretty cool. I'm also going to be adding a second one to this area right here. And in the next video, you'll see it's already there, but the same technique still applies. So we're going to do one more thing to this sword. We're going to add blood elements to it. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video.